first things first, let's talk, actually, let's go back, and let's talk about the elements, right? Everyone's heard of the elements, fire, water, air, earth, right? But you've also heard that there's five elements, right? Not four or five, heard that? Um, okay, so, all right, well, there was a movie called The Fifth Element, right? The Luc Besson did. Uh, anyway. um, okay, so what does that mean, though? What does that mean that there are five elements, right? Um, many of you would be familiar with this symbol, the pentacle, right? See that used in a lot of the pagan, Wiccan circles, hermetic sin, all the ceremonial magicians will also refer to the pentacle. The pentacle represents the combination of the four elements, which gives us the fifth, right? The fifth element is spirit in and of itself, right? So, right, we already saw kind of how spirit comes into it. And then we have fire, we've got earth, we got air, and we got water. Are typically depicted in those corners. And actually, if you want to get technical, uh, that's not just water, that's fixed water, which is Scorpio. Uh, that's not just fire, that's Leo, fixed fire. Uh, that's not just air, which is Aquarius. And then we've got- Air is fixed? Air is fixed as well. These are the fixed points okay. for, for this point. And then we've got Taurus, right, fixed Earth. Okay, so. When, um, for instance, uh, we use this uh, for when we are, like, later on, uh, when we do the pentagram ritual, the lesser banning ritual of the pentagram, greater invoking pentagram ritual, all those, they all basically are based on this configuration. Meaning, you would draw, when you are projecting and you are drawing your shapes uh, as you are casting your circle, uh, the way that you draw them are based on what operation you're doing. Are you banishing or are you invoking? Are you banishing fire? All, every way you, you can draw this, that's a different pen pentacle. So you don't need to worry about that now. Just worry about the configuration, right? But the idea is um, there are also other dynamics that we can see going on here. So if we, for instance, put fire and the opposite of fire is water. We got air, the opposite of air being earth, in the sense, right, that fire and air are both hot. Fire and earth are both dry. Water and earth are both cold. And water and air are both wet, right? So we see we got that dynamic going on. More poles, more polarities, right? Starting to see that here? And the unity of the opposites becomes spirit. Make sense? Okay, cool. So that's, that's the quick and dirty on the five elements. Um, now we're gonna get into more, what, more interesting? I don't know, more interesting, different. Uh, we're going to talk about planetary stuff. We're going to talk about the planets, and we're going to talk about the zodiac. And what is that? And we're also going to kind of go over... All right, so <laughs> you can study astrology forever, but I always find... I'm a, I like to simplify. I like the most universal base concept that you, can, that you can ascribe to something, and then I'll go from there, and I can expand out. I'd rather know the, the ideal rather than the actual, right? So one of the ways that I found is the sort of the easiest way to sort of make a shorthand to this is there are, you can ascribe like words and phrases to the signs and to the, to the planets that sort of exemplify who they are, what they are, right? So for instance, we'll start, and we'll also, though we haven't gone through it here, um, I'll, go, I'll go through them in Kabbalistic order, right? So we'll start first with Saturn. We've already talked about Saturn, right? Saturn's words are, I achieve. Okay, next up, we have Jupiter, who says, I grow. Then we have Mars, right? He says, I act. 
Then we have the son, or soul, and he says, I am. The soul is the self. The soul represents the self. Uh, or the son represents the self. Uh, so he says, I am, whatever. So that explains like where the sun appears in your zodiac chart. If it's in Pisces, for instance, then your, your mantra would be, I am what I believe, right? Because Pisces would say, we'll get to that, but Pisces says, I believe, right? So then next up, we've got Venus. What do you think she says? I love. I love. I love, right. I love. So then... So actually, technically, sorry, just if we're being specific, I know you probably can't see it. Yellow is the sun, orange is Mercury. Orange is Mercury's colors, all right, so we've got Mercury. And he says, I communicate. And finally, we've got purple Luna, who is Luna or the moon, all right? And she says, I Right, that refers to, although we didn't really get there, emotions are on this pillar, thoughts are on that pillar, right? Form, force, right? Okay, so. so where's Pluto? Uh, I didn't, I'm not doing the external planets, but we can do them real quick if you want. Um, I tend to just, when we're doing this kind of work, I tend to just focus on the, uh, the seven traditional planets, even though I know the moon isn't a planet and what have you. And neither is the sun. I know the sun's not a planet, but when we say planet, what we're, we're talking about is the wanderer, right? That's what planet means. The, the thing that moves in the sky, creating celestial alignments, that kind of stuff. Uh, so but the, right. complete without the sun god, the moon god. That's exactly right. And also because the sun represents the self, the moon represents... The sun represents the self, but the sun is also the conscious mind, that which goes forward, that which pushes others out, out of the way, right? That which penetrates versus that which... Uh, receives and so the moon in that respect represents the unconscious mind that which is penetrated right so the, the dynamic between the sun and the moon is where we get magic right so okay so just real quick for your purposes uh, Uranus or right Uranus his words are I evolve uh, Neptune uh, Neptune says I believe no I dream sorry I'm a, I'm snake. I dream in a very kind of Vishnu-y sort of way. And then Pluto says, I empower. Now, what's interesting about the external planets and why kind of don't worry about them as much, not that you can't work with them, but uh, because they move so slow and because they take years to move from sign to sign in some cases, uh, they tend to be more generational influences as opposed to like a day-to-day month-to-month kind of thing like every day is a different planetary day but we don't include the exterior planets in the same way that um all right so for instance so we put saturn here right jupiter would be here mars would be here and so on some people put like for instance uranus neptune pluto other people uh, well, I, I like that. I like Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. Other people do Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. There's different configurations. And that's why I'm like, try not to get too hung up on it. Because it, it can work either way. Because if we put Neptune up here, then he's Vishnu who dreams. If we put Pluto up here, then Pluto who empowers. The idea is that it's it, you take... Where Pluto is in your chart, it kind of describes how you want to project yourself onto the world how you want that frame control thing we were talking about how you want to change the world in your image right that's the that's pluto's energy that's what pluto wants to do he wants to change the world in his image right so we can imagine a, a god configuration in that sense right so like it, 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 it they work anyway right either way what have you um but those are the seven uh that will or they, they relate to these um and then uh, we'll do, actually, let me, let me do that real quick. All right, so just for your purposes, Jupiter goes there. Mars goes here. This is the sun right in the middle. We got Venus right here. 
We got Jupiter, or we got Mercury right there. We have Luna, the moon, right here. And then down here, we have Earth. Earth, Earth. Like the Earth we live on, Earth. Which uh, is sort of the, like I said, they're all aggregates of what came above them, right? That's manifestation. That's the physical 3D reality that we're in that combines all of this other stuff into the system that we are in. Okay, so let's go through the next bit of them and let's do the zodiac. Okay, so, and I'm gonna mark these in different colors because that'll be a quick shorthand because each of these zodiac signs, they have an elemental attribution. So I'll do them in their correct elemental colors so you'll, you'll have them. So we start with Aries, right? You get Aries in the, um, you know, the vernal equinox, the beginning of the year. Uh, Aries being the ram who charges forth impetuously into creation. Uh, really, oh, I actually didn't mark them, but two more paths. Uh, Aries actually does this. He goes from tip, from the sun, Tifereth, to Hokma wisdom. So that that's, that's the, the that, he, no, no, the fool is here and the magician is here. And like I said, we we're going to get to those later. Um, but uh, Ares is fire. He's cardinal fire. He's the fire that like begins things as opposed to being fixed or being mutable, which are the other two ways to do this. Um, all right, so after Ares, uh, oh, sorry, I should say what he says, right? Ares says, I am. So if you, for instance, were born in Ares, you're like Popeye. I am what I am, right? Okay. Um, next up, we have Taurus. And Taurus says, I have. Now, this is important. Uh, also, as we go through, technically, uh, each of these signs also rules a house, uh, which doesn't necessarily correspond to where these signs are in your chart, but their houses do. Like, so the first house is about yourself. Second house is about your resources. So like Taurus, for instance, is about what you have, your resources, right? Third, we've got Gemini, who is um, a mutable air, by the way. Fixed earth, mutable air. Uh, so Gemini, wait, oh, I'm sorry. That's what I screwed up, sorry. T technically it's the same, but Mercury technically says, I think, not I communicate. It's Gemini who says, I communicate. Which I know they're not the, exactly the same thing, but you can see how they're related through air, right? Okay, and then fourth side, Cancer. Cancer says, see now I'm, now I'm doubting myself. I wanna double check my notes. Cancer says I feel too. So for instance, if you are born with the moon in Cancer, you feel what you feel, right? And those would be your very, typically very emotional or inclined, inclined to emotion. I don't like to paint anybody with a wide brush, especially because there's always a lot more going on in your chart. Um, but, uh, okay, so now we're back around. So this together is spring, right? These would be spring. Now we're moving on to summer. We have Leo. He says, I create. And so yourself, your resources, your environment, i.e. your like neighborhood or the, like the place you live uh, is the third house. And the fourth is like the home, right? So cancer rules the home. Cancer is a very uh, maternal sign, uh, tends to be uh, about building, building home and family, that kind of stuff. T tends to be energetically speaking, although there's all different kinds of ways that that can manifest that aren't necessarily about that. Um, so remember, these aren't strict walls. They're not. They're like I said. These are. These are. Okay. So one of the most important things I learned at Micah, my years of doing art study, was that you need to learn the rules before you can break them. Everybody wants to go off and be creative and do their own thing. Great. But you need to learn the rules that you're violating before you can violate them. Otherwise something falls short. Like you don't, you can't have a negative of a negative, 
right? Or whatever. And so that's why I was like, why Chaos Magic didn't really do it for me because it was like, whatever, dude. And I'm, I, I needed something a little more. And that's why a couple other thousand magicians before me all thought the same thing and wrote this crap down and I could study it, right? But, uh, sorry, did I answer your question or what was... Yeah, I mean, the walls aren't absolute. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was the thing. To know the rules before you can break them. So while we might say you are inclined, you have a tendency, uh, nothing is set in stone. Remember, we're not in the binary world anymore. We're down in the analog world where everything is sort of a shade of gray, one form or another. And everything is caught between opposite poles. And when in my second class, we'll do the alphabet of desire, which is like one of my favorite things. Um, okay, so anyway, back to where we were. So Leo says, I create, right? Creative force tends to be very like the leadership type, uh, the dynamic personality, the roaring lion. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. So, um, where did I leave? All right. So after Leo, who is fixed fire, uh, we have Virgo. And Virgo says, I serve. Now, Virgo's house uh, refers to... Um, your uh, your service relationships, like your uh, your bosses, uh, or your religious leaders, perhaps anybody that you would you would uh, put yourself uh, under their authority if you even do that. You know, everybody uh, we all do that, right? We all pay our taxes, right? So, um, or we should. <laughs> so, like that's the idea. Like Virgo Virgo talks about um, like the service, service to the group or service to, um, to self, others, whatever, right? It, it, it all depends. Um, but that's that. And now we come up to, now we're halfway through. So now we're in, now we're at Libra, right? Yep. Okay. So we got, I should know this. It's my sign. All right. Libra. Now Libra says, I weigh. Now Libra's house refers to your, um, your, I, I guess, your equal relationships, your relationships, right? The, the, that would, would be balanced, right? Libra being the scales of balance, being balanced between the poles, being balanced between love and hate and whatever, right? Uh, I weigh, so, and that's what I do. That's, that's how I'm, and my, my Pluto is in Libra too. So like top to bottom, I'm like doing that. But, um, okay. That's why I asked about Pluto. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, well, it's important. All this stuff is important. And if it means something to you, pay attention to it. If it's, if someone's like, if there's a reason to ask about Pluto, there was probably some reason. It might have been your higher self flicking your ear, like making you pay attention. You never know, right? 